Hello, everybody. David Heavener here. I have a very, very special guest, Annie LaBear. Annie, Hi, David. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, everybody. Annie used to be a prostitute. That's right. A yeah. hooker, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, a harlot, whatever they want to call it. Yeah. Woman of the night, whore, whatever. Would you explain to everyone out there listening exactly when I say prostitute, what does that mean in your world? What kind of a prostitute were you? Well, there's different definitions of prostitution, but basically the one that I was in is it's a place where a woman sells herself or a man. It could be a girl or a boy. It could be a teenager. And we procure money for sex. Okay. Any sexual act. <clears throat> you know, what's interesting, and I want to get into your story, but do you understand there's different kinds of prostitution? Not Absolutely. Just, not just sexual prostitution? Yes. I think of today, the modern day church, a lot of times religion is, is, God's, is prostitution, people prostituting God, right. not telling the truth. Exploiting. Exploiting yeah. God. So really, prostitution is a form of exploitation. It is. For, for your personal gain. For your personal gain. You know, for, for your greed or your lust or right. your, your desire to become famous or, like you said about the church, the church can easily do this and they've done it. And I've actually had a church that has done it to me. And uh, it was real hard to, to go through that. But you have to forgive people. I, I want to get to that. But I want to stay with you for right now. So I watched your video. I heard your story. And the thing that touched me, Annie, was the story about your father. Okay? You started out your journey talking about your dad. Would you tell me what happened as a child, as a young girl, that injured you as a child? And, I, and, I, and we still carry that today, right. you know, even though the Lord heals us, mm -hmm. but we still carry it. Tell me, what is that? What happened? Well, my father, when I was growing up, he was very, very aloof and... The only time that we ever really interacted with him, he would uh, be very strict with us and very disciplinary and very, very violent mentally, physically, and emotionally. And it, it was, you know, like it was like he was like, in essence, not really my dad. It was like he was someone I didn't know. Uh, there was really no relationship except for the chastisement that he gave us. And so, he was angry all the time. Uh, so, so when a male figure such as your father, authority, walked into a room, all you knew was anger. Yeah, he, I was afraid was, of him. You were afraid, afraid of him. He was like the monster in the closet, you know? <laughs> okay. So what did that do to you? How did that injure you to cause you to seek out, because I heard your story, you would seek out uh, other men, boys in mm -hmm. high school, d d who would love you. Right. What happened? Oh, love. Their type uh, yeah, of love. They right. didn't know. Well, you know, when a child is the age that I was, when you're growing up and you don't have that balance in the parenting, what happens is uh, the child's brain, it's scientifically proven that you, that if there's any abuse, that whether it be f physical, mental, uh, you know, uh, sexual, and of course there was not, I'm not going to put my dad under the bus and say it was sexual because it wasn't, but yeah. any type of abuse to a child, uh, the brain does not develop properly. And... Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's always this want and this need and of course we have it as humans in general yeah. to be loved but there's this nurturing that needs to happen between the parents and the children that we that I never got so of course as i was growing up i started to get attention from boys mm -hmm. i noticed that hey i'm kind of cute the guys are looking at me and and it was really easy for me to justify look, I'm getting this attention. This feels great. It's kind of like today's social media. You know, you get all those likes on your Instagram, your Snapchat, or your Twitter, or your Facebook Live. You get all these people interacting with you because you're popular. You, you feel good. Mm -hmm. And so when the boys were looking at me, it was like, wow, mm -hmm. I'm getting attention from these boys. This is amazing. Wow. And so I worked it. Just that, you know, it's was, it was early prostitution, basically. It really was. Well, but... Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't this come out of a place of you being injured that you wanted to be loved yes. by your father? The, the empty hole. The, the empty hole. Mm -hmm. How important is it for a daughter to have 
a good relationship with their father. It um, is absolutely crucial and necessary and the, the one of the main staples of a family. Yeah. The other half is the mother. I mean, you, you, if you have that or don't have that, you know, you're mighty blessed if you had it. If you don't have it, get ready for a rough ride. You Obviously, you being a former prostitute, you've known a lot of girls that were prostitutes. Hookers. Se and sex traffic. And sex traffic, right. okay. How many of those, what percentage, did not have a good relationship with their father? I can't think of one that didn't. <sighs> See, I'm just keeping it real. I, 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 you, I, there's... <laughs> I have preached this for years, I'm and like, you're like on. confirming it. Yeah. It's like you look at. I've known. I've hired girls on my set that were uh, ex prostitutes, and actually, actually, they were still prostitutes, mm -hmm. but on my movie sets, right. right? And I would talk to them, and the father always came up, or else it didn't because they didn't want to talk about it. And you just confirmed that 99% of the girls that have fallen into this, they're really seeking love. They are. They it, are. It's, a, it's an injury between the, the daughter and the father. And I do have, I remember a friend of mine that her father was in her life, but for a very short time, and she cherished that relationship, but he wasn't there enough. So she right. still longed for that companionship, that friendship, that bond, that intimacy that a parent to a child brings. Right. It is really important, I, and I know any psychologist would back me up on this, or a counselor, or advice giver, or pastor, or leader, that we do need that relationship. It's, it's, uh, it's something that if we don't have it, it you know, there's a, a continue hole in our heart. But, you know, this is the only thing to me that was in the front of me at the time was right. my heart is empty, I don't have, therefore I am not. Right. And and so now you're looking to fill that hole, and you don't even know what it is. I mean, it could be addiction to coffee, it could be an addiction to sex, it could be food. <clears throat> a lot of people eat a lot of food because they don't have something. You know, so, they, so they true. fill their life yeah. with entertainment, television, or that maybe they're on their phone all day long because they don't have uh, something. Okay, now you just hit my world, television. I'm gonna ask you a question, okay? Now, I know you were injured as a child, your relationship with your father, and you sought out love in the ways that mm -hmm. you, you did, right? What part did television, programming, things that you watched, entertainment, how much did that play into your decision to act out the way you did or did Oh, it? wow. I mean... Again, before social media, our social media was television. Right. I'm a kid from the 70s and 80s, so my favorite television show was Charlie's Angels, mm. Love Boat, Fantasy Island. Uh, you know, selling and, sex. Yeah, selling of course. Sex. But then also, I wasn't allowed to watch Charlie's Angels because it was over-sexualized. Three's Company, remember that show? Oh, yeah. I wasn't allowed to watch I'd sneak and go to my girlfriend's house to right. watch it. But it was there. It was. And yeah. it was funny. I thought it was great. I mean, and I was like, wow, this is a world I don't know anything about. And <clears throat> I was going to church at the time. Right. I was forced to go to church. Right. And uh, the other thing is, is that I w came into the age of Friday Night Videos. So MTV, when it used to just play uh, music, I saw m first introduction to Madonna. Right. First it's an introduction to Culture Club, to to you know the rock bands and, and you know all the great, you know, iconic musicians that did all these great videos and you know Robert Palmer addicted to love, like those models. I'm like, the, wow, I want to look like her. The, those were your heroes. Yes, she I'm like, so, I'm gonna slick my hair back and put them right, glasses on and, and right. be thin and starve myself to look like them. Right. So so see, here's the thing with Last Evangelist, which is a TV series that tells the truth, brings God into the picture, and also we're on the train of, hey, Hollywood is destroying the family. If we can destroy the family, then we can get to the children. So here's my last question. If we could live in a world, if, where God was in Hollywood, where the movies that you watched as a child going through what you went through with your father, mm -hmm. if you would have saw God in that in some way and less sexual, I'm going to call it perversion, if it would have been more godly, would that have influenced you at all to take a different direction? Could it have? Well, I, I believe that, you know, the brain is very plastic and especially when you're growing up. So yes, you are influenced by what you watch and who you hang out with. And 
you know, television definitely was an influence on my life and it showed me that I could be rich. It showed me that I could be popular. It showed me that I could be famous. And, you know, I could use my looks for things and, and to, to, to be taught in a different manner and to be influenced in a different manner where it's more life changing as far as your spiritual and your soul being taught that life has value. Yeah. That this is all temporal, <clears throat> that the more money you have is not the answer, the more fame you have is not the answer. I think it would definitely affect our youth. And if we teach them that, uh, you know, helping people and loving people is, is really our purpose in our life. It would change the world as we know it. She just said it. See what I've been talking about. You see, here's the thing is that what Annie has gone through, she's gone through, she's been injured and she's lived a life uh, on the streets um, in the real world as a prostitute and she's come out to help people. But you see, if we could help the children right now, right now there's an Annie that's six years old out there, that's 10 years old, even a baby, and she's gonna grow up and be injured by someone, maybe her father, maybe the mother, but, there's, but there could be an injury. And when she turns and watches things on television, on YouTube, on the media, that's going to influence the direction she goes. And so it's so important that we stand as Christians and we say, no more of this. First of all, number one, we tell the truth when we make these Christian movies. Number two is we're going to only let our children be nurtured by a standard of morals that comes from God, not of Hollywood. And also, it's going to be a safe place where children won't be uh, used as a sex symbol. Annie, your story, of all the stories I've listened to, to, and I'm telling you this as a Christian to a Christian, was one of the most penetrating stories that I, I watched, your video. Would you please give them your... your um, uh, your website? It's hookersforjesus.net. Hookers. Like fishnet. Yeah. For Don't G be offended by the name, by the way, no. everyone out there. I, I was, to be honest with you, and I've <laughs> been out there. I've been around, let me tell you. But whenever I, whenever my, my uh, one of my team members, uh, Terry, said, oh, she's with Hookers for Jesus, I'm going, oh, what no, Hookers for Jesus. They're going to get but, me in trouble now. But But the thing is, it's really, you have a heart for Jesus yeah, and it's your story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, if you're uh, of age appropriate out there, go to her website and watch her video. Watch her video. It's, it'll really touch your heart. And she has a new book out, I guess. Is this a new book? Mm -hmm. It's called Fallen. And uh, they can get it on your website. Yeah, they can. And they yeah. can get it on Amazon too. But it's, it's my story and the conversion. And that was my working name. Because when you're in the sex industry, and I was being trafficked for 10 years by two different pimps. I was a high class call girl. You would never call me a prostitute back then. I want to get into all that in our next session, <laughs> yeah. okay? But, so, yeah. get the book because you'll get very educated on yeah. sex trafficking and God showing up in the middle of the darkness. It's amazing. Ab absolutely. A daughter with a relationship with her father. This is a perfect example of an injury of how Annie acted out because one of the reasons was because her role models were the wrong role models of Hollywood and what she watched. But then God came and restored you. I would like for you to tell that story before we go. What was the restoration of, of, of what was the turning point of your salvation? Well, I was doing drugs one week and I actually overdosed twice and I probably died twice. But the second time I had a near death experience where I saw my body in a coffin. I was floating over my body. I had a heart attack and I just cried out to Jesus because my mom told me as a little girl that if I ever cried out to Jesus that that he would save me. And I just knew at that point in my life that I would never sell myself ever again. I would never do drugs again. And I would actually, you know, 
go out to the girls that were on the strip, that were enslaved to trafficking and their pimps, and tell them that, that the love of God is available. That's really what you're looking for. And I just want to add this redemptive piece because I talked about my father. My father and I, about 10 years ago, reconciled a relationship. Maybe it's 11 years ago now. And he is, you know, was a different person. And he died last December. And the last conversation we had was, he goes, Annie, he goes, I think Jesus is coming to get me. I go, well, let, you know, you should pray. And he said, dear Jesus. And he made the prayer himself. And that wasn't even like my father. So I knew that he was ready. Wow. And even people that, that didn't mean to abuse us. My dad had a father that was abusive. Uh, that they can get redemption too. So no one's a lost cause. Amen. Nobody. For fathers that are watching out there. For mothers that are, are married to men who are fathers to their children, and the fathers are caught up in the same thing your father was caught up in anger, abuse, unforgiveness, unforgiveness, alcoholic, al <laughs> alcoholism. Yeah. What can you tell them? Like right now, when you're talking to them out there, what's the, what is it that the Holy Spirit gives you to tell them that would help them understand? How critical, yes, obviously salvation, but how critical it is, how crucial that they turn away from what they're doing to their, to their children and they get back on track. Right. Well, I tell you what, a life can be saved and a life can be changed and a life can be prevented from going down the road that I went down. Today's media and our, our cell phones here are doorways into the sex trafficking world now and all the world that kids are being sold, you know? Wow. And so if you don't get to your kids right now, and even if you haven't had a great relationship with them because you're working two jobs, three jobs, I get it, that happens, but you need to make time and take time for your children and really establish that bond that they need in the younger years. Yeah, so true because, you know, Hollywood, we, we can make so many great faith-based and family films but if the family, if the fathers don't turn to their children and start loving their children, and mothers too. You can watch those all you want. You, it won't mean I, anything. I saw good movies. I mean, right. I remember watching Ten Commandments when I grew up. Right. On, and, on Easter, they would right. show that movie and, and, you know, and the, you know, stories of Jesus dying on the cross. I watched Billy Graham as a little girl. That really affected me. But if you don't see it practiced in your own home, the message goes in the ear and out the other. And it kind of tries to dip to the heart. But because the child or the, the daughter or the teenager has not experienced the son, uh, that exemplified in their own home, they'll look for it somewhere else. And they will find it, trust me. Oh, yeah. There's and that, that thing will exploit them. And the devil, that's what the devil there, does. There's only, there's all, the devil is always out there on the mm -hmm. street corner waiting to sell a counterfeit, not yes. the truth. He's not, a pimp. He, yeah, he's a pimp. He's a pimp. And so fathers and mothers, one of the most important things I ever did to change my relationship with my children is it was a very simple thing. In the mornings when I was with them, I, I would open the Bible and I would read a scripture. And I wasn't a good reader. I, I asked God, I said, show me how to do this. And I would read a, a, a little scripture, Annie. It was simple. And the Holy Spirit would come in and connect me with my kids, and we'd have a discussion mm -hmm. about God. Mm -hmm. And I noticed how my daughters, because I got four of them, how wow. they started turning toward me and, and, and loving me and yeah. confiding in me mm -hmm. in a way that I didn't even know existed. Right. Fathers, I'm telling you out there, we have been sold a bill of goods that the devil has is bastard is is tearing the family to pieces. Yes. That we have to turn back to scripture. And I promise, if you start reading scripture to your kids, even if you're not mm -hmm. a good reader, that God will come in and mm -hmm. reconstruct mm -hmm. that. What would have happened if your dad would have stopped doing it and just opened the Bible and started reading to you and say, "Annie, I it's love It's just you. really crazy. I, I I I don't know, but I do know that at the end of his life, we talked about God a lot, and he had a Bible and he started reading it. With large print, of course, but right. I, I don't know what I would be doing right now. Would I be helping people? I would hope so. Yeah. So, you know, this is the other good thing about, you know, having your child learn about God is the fact that the heart uh, has strength 
you know, the soul is strengthened, the spirit is strengthened in the ways of God when they know their parents are following God. And I think the daughters looked at you because they were like, he has all the answers. Wow. Because they and, look, yeah. And if they, if, and if she, if they, you know, didn't meet a man that was like you, because we look to our fathers, uh, you know, whatever we didn't get yeah. into other men. Ooh. And so if you got... Yeah the substance that you needed, the love yeah. and the understanding and the direction that you needed, you're, you are going to be a stronger woman and a stronger man, obviously, when you start dating and you go for your soulmate because ultimately you're not going to be attracted to someone right. that you're trying to fix. Right. Because there was something that was in all those men that I was trying to fix because I tried to fix my dad and it didn't work. And it didn't work. And and you're and, and the father's a role model for future relationships with the girl, right? Yes, with the daughter. Absolutely. And and if the father uh it doesn't need to, I mean everybody needs to be fixed, but if it's not so dramatic with the young child, the little girl's out trying to find a guy like her dad to fix, right. then they're not looking for the broken people as much, right? No, and, they're they're looking to change the world because they're ready to go already. They're they're ready to go it, already. It, it's not and, you know it's not like they're stuck somewhere. And, and isn't it true that when a child looks at their father, they're kind of looking at God, yes. their version of God. It's yes. the first God they it, encounter. Exactly, our parents are our first God. They yeah. really are. And and I have to say something, it, and I want to speak to all the families out there that have one parent. You know, don't give up. Don't be discouraged. My mom, were all the bad things that my father had done to us kids and my family and even her relatives, and there's a lot of hurt and a lot of pain, she was the glue that kept us together. Mm. That woman had so much faith. Wow. And even though my dad would hit her and she'd fall down, she'd get right back up, she'd brush off, she'd cry, she'd wipe the blood off of her face, and she would say, kids, we have to forgive your father. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I swear to you, my mom had the love like Jesus for my daddy. And, and she stayed with him for many years. I don't recommend that to someone that's being physically abused yeah. or mentally like that. You need to get counseling. You need to separate. But my mom, somehow she, she made it through. And she became my example in a lot of different ways. And I think about her because I, I look to her and I feel like she's a saint. Yeah. Because she took so much pain and turned it into treasure. Forgive them, Father, for they know not yeah, what they she, do. She walks it. She lives she it and breathes it. it. Right. And uh, right to the very end with my daddy. And my dad uh, asked her for forgiveness so many times, more than she could count. But really towards the end, he was in a home at the very end. You know, he kept asking her, do, do, do you forgive me? You know, Joanne, do you forgive me? And she said, you know, I do. And I, and I, I forgive you. Did your father ever come to you and ask for forgiveness? Yes, in 2006. Why did he do that? What what caused him to come and ask for forgiveness? Because he had heard my story on television. I had warned my parents it was coming out. And they were watching, I think it was 20, 2020, Nightline 2020. And my story was on there. And I was uh, very afraid that my father would be so upset with me when he saw it. But I came to my home in Wisconsin, because at the time I was living in Vegas, I still do, and I was making him juice and he came to the table and he told me that he needed my forgiveness for the way he had treated me as a child. And uh, he told me he believed that my lifestyle choices were a direct result of his abuse. Wow. And he said, I, I know it's my fault. And he just busted up in tears and he, he was, inconsolable for a couple minutes. I had to hug him and say, it's okay, it's okay. Wow. And I remember saying to him, I said, Dad, I forgive you. And you know that song by Aretha Franklin? Chain, 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 chain of fools. I told him it was broken, that there's no more foolish things that are gonna happen. And that it that stops, it stops in our family. Mm. There's no more. No, no more generational yep. curse. Yep. It's gonna stop. And so I believe I... it's off our family now. Wow. Uh, Annie, <clears throat> out there, there could be a young girl, um, maybe 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and she's gone through what you've gone through. She has a broken relationship with her father, and, and sh she has to make choices. What can you say to her? What, you know, she's angry. 
she doesn't have the dad that, that God wanted her mm-hmm. to have. Maybe there's a girl out there that doesn't have a father. What, what can you say to her? I, I would tell her because this is, this is what did help me in very troubled times back then. Even though I might not have had it as I do now, obviously, but run to Jesus. I, I cannot tell you the prayer and in your, in your quiet place. You know, don't don't look around at your friends or your social media because many of you probably have phones now. The answer is not in things or or fame or fortune or the way you look or your hair or what new clothes that your mom just bought you to look cute in school. It really is in looking inward and finding that place of peace, which is Jesus. And if you ask for him, he'll show up. If you pray to him, he'll give you the peace that you're looking for. And get a Bible. I don't know if your house has a Bible, but I would ask your mom, hey, or your dad, or maybe your neighbor, maybe a friend, hey, can I borrow your Bible? Mm-hmm. Read the Gospel of John and find out the reason why, that you're really here. Mm-hmm. Find out why. What your purpose is. It, you know, if you can find out your purpose, everything else will follow. You know, your purpose mm-hmm. is way more important than you and your life and the things that you're going through now. And if you can just see the bigger picture, God will complete what he started in you, which Am- is greatness. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So for you young girls out there, maybe you don't have a good relationship with a guy, with your father. Maybe you don't have a father. You do have a father in heaven. And he loves you. And he loves you very much. And that's what Annie uh, is talking about, is that you have two choices on the On the street corner you have Satan who will sell you a bill of goods that will that will destroy your life and that's what he wants to do or you have God standing on the corner who will enhance your life bigger and better than you could ever you could ever imagine and he wants to be your daddy he wants to fix Mm -hmm. the chipped merchandise all the fame Mm -hmm. uh, pain God is waiting for that Annie thank you so much And God it's bless been a pleasure. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank God you. bless you. When we come back, we're going to talk about, on part two, human trafficking. I got some questions for Annie. I don't know that she's ever been asked before, but I'm going to ask him anyway. I feel like God's laid it in my heart, but you stay with us. God bless you.